Why, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's Journey Across Gillinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now, in the last episode, I finally unlocked the Guardians of the Rift. This required unlocking quite a few new chunks, as the Precursor Quest, Temple of the Eye, took me all the way across the ocean to Ardoin. But we have at last made it there, and it's time to start really getting into some runecrafting training. Now, I ended off the last episode at 56 runecrafting, a pretty decent start, but where exactly is my end goal for runecrafting? Now, when it comes to making money with runecrafting, there are a couple really important levels. At level 59 runecrafting, we get access to double cosmic runes. This could be a really, really good option for the level. And at 77 runecrafting, we get access to blood runes, which eventually we will hopefully be able to craft, but it does have a quest requirement behind it. All the way up at 91 runecrafting, we get access to double nature runes, which there are no other requirements to access this, but 91 runecrafting is really far away. At 95 runecrafting, we get access to one of the best methods in the game for money, and that's wrath runes. But unfortunately, same deal, that's a really damn high runecrafting level. But you know, we gotta start somewhere. Man, I still don't know why it takes so long to get into a Guardians of the Rift game. Kind of a weird mechanic. While I've been waiting though, I have been able to rekindle my addiction to Clash of Clans. I was actually super excited when Clash of Clans reached out to me to sponsor a video, as at one point it was definitely my most played mobile game. Now if you've never played Clash of Clans before, it's a really cozy game and it has you control a chief of a fantasy village. You'll start off small by building and upgrading your village, gathering resources, and training up your troops. I've been trying to focus on my resource production buildings of course because I'm always a fan of having a strong economy, but the most important building to upgrade is your town hall as this will unlock most of the upgrade paths to buildings and higher level troops. Now I've actually been at this for a couple of days and we're actually pretty close to being able to upgrade to the town hall level 4. We just have to build a few more things and we should be good to go. Well there goes all my money but that's okay we can just go ahead and get some more. We're going to do this by scouting another player to attack. So these people are kind of poor, nah. Okay, so this person has a decent amount of loot and, well, not the best base design. I mean, what medieval village would put their massive siege engine mortar thing on the outside of their wall? I don't know. And just like that, we looted about 14,000 resources. Pretty easy. Honestly, this game is one of the truly fun mobile games, and I would highly recommend giving it a try. You can either click the QR code in the corner or simply click on the link in my description. It's completely free to download. And by doing that, you'll be supporting me directly. So thanks again to Clash of Clans for sponsoring the video. Alright, so we have managed to obtain one piece of the outfit so far. The boots, which are the least noticeable, I mean, from a fashion perspective. Uh, but we have been grinding out quite a few games here, and we managed to save up another 21 rolls at the Reward Guardian. We have no Abyssal Pearls left, so we're kind of starting from scratch again. Hopefully we can get as lucky as last time. Well, not quite as good, but 44 pearls is a start, plus another 80k in loot. That's all adding up, and uh, so far we're actually at nearly a mil just in runes, so not a bad start. Now, I would hazard a guess that Guardians of the Rift with no rune pouches is about 30% slower than a normal account. Now, I've opted not to use them because the large pouch in particular degrades really quickly, like in 15 minutes, and to have to leave Guardians of the Rift leave my game and go repair it, it's just too much of a pain. So we're just taking a hit in experience and money, but normally acquiring the entire runecrafting outfit takes like 20 to 25 hours, but for me it's probably going to take closer to 35 hours I think at the rate we're going. So it's actually quite a time consuming grind. Okay, we've managed to stock up another 15 rewards. We're still kind of struggling to keep a balance of elemental and catalytic energy. And that is another 43 pearls, bringing our total up to 150. Okay, it's a new day, and I have been grinding out Guardians of the Rift a lot. We have another 24 rolls here, and we're still over-indexing significantly into elemental energy, but not much I can do about that.
Oof, okay, we got pretty unlucky in those ones. We only got 34 pearls from over 25 rolls. Not great, but hey, we got some runes and some money, so can't complain too much. We still have managed to make it up to 250 pearls. Oh my god, I forgot you can actually get these. We got a antique lamp. <laughs> Guess we're gonna put into rune crafting for now. So that is our 90th rift closed, and we also have another 16 rewards to claim. Hopefully we can get a bit lucky here. Oh my god, the catalytic talisman is a... That's a collection log, oh my god, it's worthless unfortunately. Not exactly the one I'm looking for. That said, we did get 52 abyssal pearls. Uh, which I think luckily is just enough to buy the next piece of the runecrafting outfit. Uh, so we're going to opt I think for the rope top, it's just the most noticeable. And there we go, another piece of the outfit unlocked. We got two out of four complete, although the last two are a little more expensive than the first two. But uh, we're kind of almost somewhat halfway there. Now from the Reward Guardian, there are a few other rewards that I haven't really mentioned. There's the Abyssal Lantern, which is a really useful item within Guardians of the Rift. It'd be amazing to get that early on, because what it does is it actually allows you to get different benefits within the minigame, such as increasing the amount of runes you craft, the amount of points you gain from the minigame, but probably the most important thing of all is it can stop your pouches from degrading in Guardians of the Rift. Which means if we get the Abyssal Lantern, we could theoretically start using our essence pouches, which would be such a big benefit. So hopefully we can get that. Ooh, the Abyssal Green Dye. This is another thing I actually didn't mention before. Okay, this is actually pretty helpful. What this actually does is it recolors your skilling outfit, purely cosmetic, it doesn't matter too much. But what we can actually do is trade this in for Abyssal Pearls, which is definitely what I'm going to do. We can trade it in for 50 Abyssal Pearls, which is amazing. That just saved us like an hour. Bringing our entire inventory here up to 145 Abyssal Pearls in one inventory, that's crazy. We've already rebuilt our pearl stack so much. Well, this is a really interesting inventory. We got a hard clue scroll, which we almost certainly can't do. Eventually, it'd be cool to get a lot of the clue scroll locations unlocked, but that's not realistic. I don't think we're ever going to get all of them. We got a dragon med helm and a regular needle. Now, another reward I hope I get while we're getting the full outfit is the abyssal needle. This will allow me to make the colossal pouch once we get to 85 runecrafting, and if we don't get it, we're probably going to have to come back here eventually to grind it out. It's just too useful, but we're not going to be able to use it till 85 runecrafting, and that's like a millennia away, so I'm not even going to worry about it for now. Another day and another 25 rewards obtained. This probably took me a couple hours to obtain. That said, I have found things a lot easier to keep in balance now that we have both the nature rune and the chaos rune unlocked. Sadly, only 45 pearls from that though. So I've been grinding at the minigame a lot today and I think we finally have enough pearls for another piece. We've been at it for like 4 or 5 hours just today. You can see our rune stack is now up to 3.6 mil and that's all from, pretty much all from the reward guardian. Some of it's from nature runes but we're not actually getting a ton of money from the minigame itself. Just mostly from the reward rolls. And there we go, that is the row bottom of the eye. We have now three out of the four pieces of the outfit complete. Unfortunately so far, no Abyssal Lantern and no Abyssal Needle, which would be a little unfortunate if I didn't get either of them. But we still got a little bit of time left. Hopefully we can get it in the last three or 400 pearls or so. Okay, I haven't actually been recording too many of my levels lately, but thanks to all the grinding we've done, we've actually just hit 70 runecrafting. Kind of crazy. I didn't expect that this would be my highest level skill when I set out to make this account, but it definitely is by a significant margin. So after 70, the next thing we're kind of excited about is 77 runecrafting, which will unlock us the blood rune. I'm not sure if I'm going to get quite that high just from Guardians of the Rift, but for now 70 runecrafting is a great milestone. And on top of that, we have another like 15 reward pulls to go through, so let's go ahead and do those now. Alright, 51 pearls, not bad. Yes, we finally got it, the Abyssal Needle, um, yes, okay. We've gotten everything from Guardians of the Rift that we really actually need. At this rate, I don't think we're ever getting the Abyssal Lantern. I didn't get it on my main account after like seven or 800 pulls, and I don't think we're getting it here either. But to be honest, the Abyssal Needle is much more important. Looking at the collection log here, it doesn't look too bad. I don't think we've gotten particularly lucky or unlucky. We're just kind of sitting right in the middle. 
So it looks like we've opened 410 rifts and we got the needle, we got an abyssal die, and now we just kind of have to finish out the outfit. Oh my god, please. I hope this is enough. We only have six rolls left. We only need one more drop of Abyssal Pearls. Oh, thank god. Okay, so if you look at the bank, we have 407 Abyssal Pearls. That should just be enough to get the final piece of the outfit. So that should just be enough to buy the Hat of the Eye. There we go, guys. That is the full runecrafting outfit complete. Oh, I'm excited about that. That has jumped us up from 30% extra runes to 60% thanks to the set effect. And now we're we're done. We're done with the Guardians of the Rift. I mean, I might come back here, but we have everything that we strictly need. We got the Abyssal Needle. We got the full rune crafting outfit. And on top of that, we generated ourselves quite a decent amount of runes, completing this entire grind. Now we ended up with a variety of different runes, but notably 13,000 nature runes and 11,000 Chaos Runes. Altogether, we ended up with 6 mil in loot from this grind, and it took me about 30 hours, so only like 200k an hour or something, but you know, we were training runecrafting, and regardless, this is going to be the most money we've had on this account yet. So we started this grind at 27 runecrafting, and we ended at 73, so that's roughly how many runecrafting levels you'll get trying to get the entire outfit and we also ended up with 52 mining on top of that and that was purely from mining the guardian essence nothing else really so it definitely was not quick but it did add up over time now the final thing to wrap up the guardians of the rift saga is just to sell off all the runes we got i'm gonna keep a few things like we're gonna keep a couple of the law runes they're just gonna come in handy but everything else we're gonna sell off and after claiming everything we sold, we ended up with a 5 mil cash stack, which is really nice. We have so many options with this. We could buy a couple cheaper items. We could buy a really useful, expensive one. All that Guardians of the Rift finally paying off. So we are finally done with Guardians of the Rift, and it's time to move on to real world runecrafting. And the way we're going to do that is through the Abyss. The Abyss gives access to all of the runecrafting altars around Gilnor which is really convenient because all of the actual altar locations are not in the overworld, so we can access them from this chunk. Now before we get started, there are a few other small housekeeping things I need to get done. Now the most important thing I need to go do is acquire the large pouch. We already have unlocked the small and medium essence pouch, which holds, you know, a moderate amount of rune essence. But before we start crafting runes, I think it's going to be important to unlock the large pouch, which holds even more rune essence, and pretty soon we'll even be able to unlock the giant pouch at 75 rune crafting, which will allow us to hold even more. Once we've unlocked all of the regular pouches, we'll be able to hold a cumulative 30 extra rune essence, which will increase our money and experience by a tremendous amount. Now I got the other two rune pouches from the mini quest and Guardians of the Rift, but because we're done with that for now, the easiest way for me to acquire the higher tier rune pouch is actually to go into the Abyss area and kill some of the monsters there. It's pretty dangerous, so we're gonna have to bring a good amount of food, but hopefully it won't take too many kills. Oh, well there it is. There is the large pouch acquired. Okay, so it's time guys, we're ready to go on our first actual Abyss runecrafting run. Now thankfully, our runecrafting scaling outfit is safe under 20 wilderness. Feels kind of sketchy going into the wilderness with it, but I've double checked, we're fine. We'll be able to reclaim it from our gravestone, and that's really good because otherwise this outfit would be kind of useless. So the strategy is pretty simple, from Edgeville we're going to run north, teleport to the Abyss from the Dark Mage, and then we're going to go through one of the traps, ideally the mining challenge because my mining level is higher than most of my skills, but we could also go through the agility shortcut as well, but we're going to fail that a fair amount. Once we're through the antechamber, we're going to go through the nature rift right now, and craft ourselves 67 nature runes, or about 12,000 gold worth of runes. Now the great thing here is once my rune pouches have degraded, I can simply just go ahead and talk to the dark mage. He's literally right beside the nature altar entrance, and we'll lose almost no time repairing the pouches. Alright, so we have the abyss unlocked, and I've been runecrafting for a little bit here. But to be honest, I've actually died quite a few times. Getting through the skilling challenges doesn't take a super high level in whatever skill you're using. But I mean, my account's pretty low level. I only have like 30 agility. 
50 something mining. I mean, we fail it more than half the time and the damage adds up pretty quickly. My hit points level is pretty low as well. So honestly, I think we're gonna have to do a little bit of training to make the Abyss more viable because right now I'm dying kind of often and our experience rate is suffering quite a lot. All right, so we ended up with a fair bit of cash from our Guardians of the Rift grind. We have nearly 5 mil in the inventory right now, and it's time to go ahead and buy a new unique item to add to our collection. And we're gonna go with the Devout Boots, a nice cheap item. I mean, it offers the best in slot prayer bonus, super helpful. Gonna be super handy once we can wear them, and we're able to buy it for about 1.1 mil. Now another cheapish item I decided to go pick up, mostly for color balance reasons. I mean, it's our first purple item. What was I supposed to do? Uh, we got the Dragon Plate Body, potentially the ugliest item in the entire game. So we're going to invest into those two chunks right now. And what am I going to do with those? I'm going to try to complete Biohazard. Now my focus for the first 100-200 hours of this account has been on unlocking Guardians of the Rift and Temple of the Eye. But now that we're done with that, where exactly is our journey going to take us next? While we don't have to fully commit in a certain direction, the more focused we can be, the more efficient we can be with how we move around the map. Now, in my opinion, there are three major routes I am considering right now. I haven't honestly not even decided. We have the Prifdinus route. This will follow the Elven quest line and will give us access to a couple of really important high-end moneymakers such as Zora, the Gauntlet eventually, Thieving from Elves, as well as there is a ton of other content the Elven Land offers. Another route I'm considering is that of the Desert. While the Desert doesn't offer a ton as far as money making goes, the Tombs of Masket is one of the best money makers in the game and can be accessed at a reasonably low level. That would be its major benefit. And the third route is that of Mauritania. Mauritania offers a wide variety of content, spanning mid and end game equally. We have the entire city of Darkmire, which offers a ton of high-level moneymakers, such as the Theater of Blood, the Hallowed Sepulchre, Vires, but it also offers a lot in between there, like Barrows and other mid-level moneymakers. And yeah, it's a big decision because they're all kind of going in separate directions, but we kind of have to pick one. So we're going to start with Plague City and then we're hopefully going to be able to complete Biohazard without having to unlock too many chunks. Now I've opted to go this way because I know at some point I'm going to want to unlock Zalra. There's no ifs about it, just kind of when. It might not be in the near future, but at some point we're going to go this direction. But besides that, Ardoin unlocks the entire west side of the map. Otherwise, I don't really have a good way to get over here. Right now we're still taking a boat. So it'd be pretty nice to unlock the Ardoin Teleport, as well as to be a lot closer to things like the Gnome Stronghold, which we'll need to get to eventually, and the entire west part of Gilinor. Now the only chunk I have unlocked in Kandarin right now is the West Ardoin Market. So the first chunk we have to unlock here is the Ardoin Castle. The castle is involved in pretty much all of the Elven storyline quests, so we kind of have to unlock it at some point. The slightly unfortunate part is the start to Plague City and Biohazard, isn't even in this chunk, it's just a little bit to the north, but that's kind of why we invested into two items. Looks like we're also going to get the pet insurance person, so if you do happen to get a pet, we'll be able to reclaim it now. But unfortunately, if we run up to the north here, yep, Edmund is just a little bit too far north. Wish I could just yell at him over his fence and ask to start the quest that way. It would save us a whole lot of trouble. Okay, so we just had to unlock the North Ardoin chunk, mostly for the quest location, but it looks like it also unlocked the Chaos Druid Tower, uh, which is somewhere I've never really been into, but we might check it out at some point, as it does have a dungeon with some monsters in it, and it might be useful for training. But most importantly for now, we can finally start the Plague City questline. And unfortunately, the cost of Plague City is kind of a bit steep. Three chunks to unlock this thing, because we also need to unlock West Ardoin. In no way is this a waste, but a bit costly right now. Okay, so we've scouted a few items here, and I was actually able to find one for exactly one mil. And that is the Twisted Horns. That's the first time I think I bought one right on the nose for a mill. And just like that, that is another item added to the collection.
So with that item purchase, we're able to unlock the West Ardoin chunk, a pretty significant quest location in the Elven storyline. Now this chunk here is a great example of why this challenge is going to be so difficult. This chunk has nothing of particular value, but it is used for a quest, and it's really hard to determine how many of these types of chunks exist. Sure, we know where all the quests start, but I can't really feasibly figure out where each of the 100 plus quests will lead you, and if they intersect different random chunks, that's really just going to be left to fate, we're going to have to find out. Ah, that is really disappointing. I forgot it brings you to the northern building and that's just in the chunk to the north, which is kind of a shame because I don't think there's anything else useful in that chunk. I mean, you get the combat training camp, but I don't think there's any other quest locations up there and you don't strictly have to go to the combat training camp, I don't think. It's a bit of a bummer. This is like almost a dead chunk beyond that one tiny quest location. That is certainly a shame. We're going to have to... Uh, we're gonna have to think about that for a minute. Okay, so now that I've spent most of my bank that we generated from Guardians of the Rift, it's time to do a little bit of training to make our runecrafting more viable. Ideally, I need to level up my hit points so I just can take more damage, my defense level so I mitigate some more damage, and my agility so that I don't fail the obstacle so much while I'm trying to go to the abyss. Okay, so we're kind of camping the Draenor course right now. Uh, we got to 35 agility. It's pretty slow and we could theoretically unlock the Varrock course if we wanted, but I kind of don't want to spend the extra money right now because it's actually not really that much quicker. Okay, so we've been here for a couple hours and that is going to be 40 agility. That's all we can really do for now. I mean, we could train her longer, but the levels are going to be incredibly slow at this point. So 40 agility, we'll, uh, we'll have to do. Uh, so that's the first skill taken care of. Agility has been leveled up a bit, now we're going to try to train up our defenses and our hit points kind of passively. We're going to do this just by killing Chaos Druids, it's our best kind of combat moneymaker right now, and they're actually pretty decent experience. Okay, so we're starting off here with 50 strength. While our goal is more so to level up our defense, this is just a more efficient way to go about leveling your account anyway. We're going to start with strength to get a higher max hit, then we're going to go with attack to be more accurate, and then finally we'll level up our defense making this a bit more tanky. Okay, this is a really nice level here. We got 50 attack, and that actually has unlocked as a really interesting weapon. Uh, one that most people don't really end up using, but we're gonna go for it. So we're gonna go ahead and invest a bit of money into the Granite Hammer. This item is better than the Rune Scimitar and requires 50 attack and strength to use, and I think will be the best weapon until we get to 60 attack. And it just kind of looks badass as well. So there we are, we just hit 50 defense, which means we now have base 50 combat stats, if you ignore ranged, which we're going to. So the whole purpose of this was to make our runecrafting a little bit more consistent, and I think having more defense levels and more hit points is definitely going to help out, so I think it's about time to go give it another try. So things have definitely improved, uh, I'm not dying nearly as much anymore. The agility levels in particular I think are really helping out. And we also just hit a really interesting level, 74 runecrafting, which actually allows us to make double chaos runes, which is almost as good as single nature runes. I mean, it might honestly be better. So an inventory of double chaos runes is worth 10,000, and an inventory of single natures is around 11 or 12k right now, so it's actually not quite as good. But if nature runes fall more, then yeah, I mean, we'll actually have to switch over to double chaos runes. Never thought I would be doing that. Okay, so currently we're level 74 runecrafting right now, which means we're actually a single level away from another major upgrade, the Giant Pouch. Uh, so we're definitely going to try to go ahead and get that right now. But firstly, let's go ahead and liquidate our bank right now, as we have a lot of odds and ends from just doing a few different things, such as all the herbs from the Chaos Druids and the runes that we just crafted as well. Okay, so after selling everything of importance off, we're up to nearly 3 mil. So with that money, we'll be able to unlock one or maybe even two chunks and have a really good idea of something important that we can unlock with that. So due to the weird prices of runes right now, crafting single nature runes is not really optimal. At my level, the rune that actually makes the most money per hour is cosmic runes, more specifically double cosmic runes. The problem is I don't actually have access to the altar because I need to complete Lost City to unlock the ability to craft cosmic runes. 
Now, if we have a look at the map, completing Lost City actually wouldn't require too many chunks. I think only two. And I think that's actually what I want to do next. So we're going to go for the cheapest item I have on the list right now, and that is the Blue Dark Bow Paint. I started this account last April when I made it. This item was worth well over a mil, now it's not. So what we're going to do is buy it for a mil and drop the difference on the ground for uh, some loot goblin to go pick up. Okay, so I just went to go start Lost City, and this is actually really exciting. And the start point to the quest is actually in a chunk I've already unlocked. I thought I would need to unlock the West Lumbridge Swamp chunk, but actually we have access to it, which is a nice change of pace instead of everything just being slightly out of reach like it has been. Now with that said, that chunk is definitely still required because for the quest we need to unlock Entrana. So Entrana is only accessible via boat, so we are able to unlock it from the Port Serum dock and we'll need to for the quest. So the Entrana chunk is actually kind of interesting. There's some useful things here and a plethora of quest locations. Luckily for my purposes right now, what I need access to is the Entrana dungeon, which thankfully is just within the bounds of the chunk. Otherwise we would have needed a third item, which would have definitely, that would have sucked. So the ancient magical tree spirit, we uh, safe spotted behind that mushroom, no worries. And we're cutting ourselves some Draymond branches and gained access to the Draymond staff. Okay, so we do need to buy a second item here for the quest. And once again, we're going to be drawing from the bottom of the list again. This time we're going to go with the dark tuxedo boots, which again, the rest is going to be dropped on the ground. Good luck, everyone. Okay, so the final chunk that we're going to need for Lost City is the East Lumbridge Swamp chunk. Looking at the chunk on paper, there's not too much here. There is a mine, although it's one of the lowest level ones in the game. We can now start the Restless Ghost quest, but most importantly, we now have access to the Lumbridge Shack, which is the final step in the Lost City quest, which we have now completed. Getting access to Zanaris is actually quite a big upgrade. Zanaris is definitely not on the overworld. I mean, I think it's on the moon, technically. So we now have access to the entire city of Zanaras, and most importantly, now have access to Cosmic Runes. So we're going to go all the way from 74 runecrafting to 75, all with Cosmic Runes. It's actually going to take quite a number of hours, because the experience rate is so bad. I'm getting about 15k per hour runecrafting experience, but each run is bringing me about 14,000 GP worth of runes. Alright, so this grind is finally done with. 74 to 75 runecrafting took me about 5 hours, but there we are, 75 is complete. Like I was mentioning, a really awesome level. We now get access to the giant pouch, which will increase our experience and money per hour by 10-15%. Well, the giant pouch is actually a pretty big upgrade. And if you look at the bank here, we also managed to craft 45,000 cosmic runes, which is really good. Unfortunately, cosmic runes have started going down in price a little bit, but we'll try to sell them off now before they crash too much more. Well, they're still worth over 100 GP each, which means 45,000 is worth about 4.5 mil, which we'll happily sell off right now. So 4.5 mil from that grind is pretty damn nice that we're getting about 8 or 900k per hour from double cosmic runes, which is definitely my best money maker on top of training the skill, which will benefit me a lot as I get a higher level. Okay, so the final step in the process here is to go ahead and collect our giant pouch. We're once again back in the abyss, this time fighting the creatures. God, they do so much damage. What the hell? Oh, there it is. Finally, the giant pouch is done with. We can get the hell out of here before we die again. So I think with that, our mid-game runecrafting setup is complete. We have all the basic pouches. Probably the best runecrafting moneymaker unlocked until the 90s or until we can get blood runes unlocked, but that's not happening for a while. And on top of that, we also managed to get a 5 mil payout from all the cosmic runes we crafted. And we're set up really well for the next episode where we're going to make a pretty big decision. What route are we going to take? The Mauritania route? The Prifdinus route? Or the desert? Let me know your predictions down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.
Now, before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Alejandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also, thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.